Hey guys, recently I shipped a game written in Unity using Mirror as well as Playfab. So we use Playfab extensively for our multiplayer servers. And these are five tips that I've compiled for you so that you can get up and running really quick and also not stumble along the way. Have fun, let's get started. All right, so the first tip I have is to figure out how to gracefully terminate your server, right? So in my case, I had the need where I had to terminate the server as soon as the player count of the server dropped to zero. So that was part of my business logic where I had zero players connected in lobby, shut down the Playfab server. And so the way I'm doing this is I have a callback on, registered on my network manager where you know if a player is removed, then I call some certain logic. And if the player count hits zero, or actually before that, I am you know checking a shutdown condition, which is a function. So if the player count hits um, zero, then I just call a shutdown function, right? And all this is handling is it calls application dot quit. And so coming back to this, anything that sort of kills your game server process. So in Unity, application dot quit kills your game server process. In Unreal Engine, it might be a different way. In Go dot you know, it might be a different way. So you kind of have to figure out um, how to kill your process and that will kill your Playfab server as well. So kill your process or rather your game server process using application dot quit in Unity. All right, so the second tip I have is use Linux containers because they are cheaper and easier to figure out. Learn Docker as well as basics of Unix. So the most basic shell commands. And this is where the Pareto principle applies, right? If you know 20% of Unix and all commands that I use, you can get around 80% of your work done. Same with Docker. I have some tutorials on this. You can check them out on the previous videos. So I'm here to quickly show you how this works in practice. I have a sample multiplayer build and I'm just going to go to servers. I'm going to hit request server. And you can see that once this becomes active, right, um, I can actually connect to this, right? So I can connect to the virtual machine. Um, it gives me an SSH command that I can copy. I'm going to click copy, right? And back in my terminal, I'm going to paste the SSH command. And you can see here that I've successfully SSH'd into my server, right? And just like I showed you um, here, you can see that my container is running, right? And if I go here and I type docker psa, I'll have to sudo this, paste my password again, and you can see my container is actually running. And I can actually check the logs for this container as well. And you can see here that this is my Unity game servers logs. So if I have to debug something, I can come here immediately, check what's going on, and I can quickly get onto fixing whatever bug I have. So the next tip I have is to actually create a CDI CD pipeline, right? So what this allows you to do is essentially say, hey, as soon as my game server is built and it's deployed, or uh, let's say onto my version control, then I want to be able to trigger a build that hits Playfab directly and then creates a new build. So the steps would look something like this, right? So you push to version control, which is let's say GitHub or Plastic SCM, you know, whatever you're using. You use GitHub Actions to auto create a server executable. So I have a video on how you can use GitHub Actions with Unity. So you can check that out. Um, you automatically create a Linux container in this action, and then you deploy your container to Azure's container registry, and then you create a build. So if you can automate this whole process, then you don't really have to ever intervene. You just type one command, which is push to your master branch or whichever branch is responsible for your server, and then you call it a day. So the next tip I have is to actually use cloud functions, right? So do not have any logic on your game client to actually, you know, request a server and, you know, handle all that logic within there. So you want your client to be making an API call to, let's say a cloud function. The cloud function figures out, you know, with a set of arguments, which server to query, whether it should request for a new Playfab server, what exactly needs to happen. And then it just returns back to the client, you know, the IP and the port that it's supposed to connect to. So to add on to this, you want your client to be razor thin, right? You don't want it to, you don't want to give your client more responsibilities than it needs. Don't handle any business logic of actually requesting the server and client. Again, same, you know, in line with what I've written above. And also it's a security flaw to actually make these API calls on your client. You only want to be requesting for servers and getting servers on a server uh, or on some server environment because you're also using Playfab's API keys, um, right? And among a bunch of other things. So keep that in mind. 
if you're confused on how to implement this, I have a repository on my GitHub, right? Where I have a C sharp file and it shows you exactly how you would set up your requesting a multiplayer server. Um, this is with using Azure functions and I am using environment variables to make sure that my title ID and my secret key are all abstracted away. So you can check out this repository. It's public, it's free. Anybody can look at it and use it. Go ahead. All right, so the final tip I have is to spend time reading about CS networking concepts. So naturally everything that you're doing here falls into some amount of DevOps work, right? So there's a lot of overlap with DevOps. It basically is DevOps, right? So you wanna make sure that if, if your application has some edge cases or your business logic has some edge cases that, you know, does not follow like a cookie cutter pattern, then you need to be aware of, you know, certain concepts, uh, protocols like TCP IP, you have web sockets, um, you have HTTP. Um, if you are aware about DNS, SSL certs, um, you need to be aware of all this because I'll give you an example. So I had a recent issue. So a recent problem where I had to connect a WebGL client to a PlayFab server, right? And you can't, you can't do this straight out of the box because PlayFab doesn't give you a server that is SSL certified or the domain is not SSL certified. So in this case, I actually had to set up a reverse proxy to get it to work. And, you know, thanks to PlayFab's, uh, you know, guys who actually helped me out with this, but it helps to know some of these concepts, you know, in and out so that you don't struggle with some of these problems in the future if they ever arise with your game project. All right, guys, that's about it from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please don't forget to ask. And also I've open sourced some of these repositories that sort of help you get up and running really quickly with Unity and PlayFab. So I'll drop those links in the description as well. If you like them, please start them on GitHub. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you in the next one.